What are some examples of sexual assault? Um, so because we do work in the middle schools, when we talk about sexual assault or sexual violence um, or sexual harassment, we talk about it in terms of what they're experiencing. So we really focus our definitions and examples about what's happening in school. Um, and so to start with the definition, we define sexual harassment as unwelcome sexual behavior that is bad enough or happens often enough to make you feel uncomfortable or scared and that interferes with your schoolwork or your ability to participate in extracurricular activities like sports or clubs. Right, that's the definition we use with the middle school students, but it pretty much mirrors the, uh, the definition in Title IX, which is the law that controls, the federal law that controls sexual harassment in schools. So you're probably more familiar with how Title IX operates, not so much in the sports world, but in the sexual harassment uh, world in the workplace. And there are basically two kinds of sexual harassment. There's what's called quid pro quo, this for that. So think about uh, a plum assignment in exchange for a sexual favor by someone um, who has uh, a, is in a position of power or a raise or a threat could be a threat to um, demote someone or fire someone. And that would be the quid pro quo piece that tends to occur in the workplace uh, more so than in the school, although in the schools it could be a coach or a teacher who says, I'll let you get on the team if you do X, Y, Z. But the more common kind and that what we're really focused on is uh, peer-to-peer, -peer, not sort of power relationships, peer-to-peer -peer sexual harassment, which is more along the lines of a severe and pervasive, the hostile work environment, or in our case, hostile school environment, um, that, uh, that uh, shows up in the, in the middle schools, primarily in the middle schools, but some in high schools as well, but it's highest in middle school. And the kinds of things that we see at the middle school level, types of sexual harassment, include things like um, cat calling or homophobic name uh, calling or homophobic bullying is, a, uh, is something that happens all too often. Um, could be bra strap snapping, butt flapping, uh, upskirting, taking a photograph when someone is going up and up the steps um, without their permission, taking a photo from underneath, um, surreptitious taking of photos in um, in gym locker rooms is another thing that unfortunately we see. Unwelcome sexting or pressure to share a um, suggestive photo. Um, all kinds of different things. And what we know from recent research, American Association of University Women did a, a, a national study of what's happening in the schools is that 40% uh, of boys in middle school experience sexual harassment as, um, as, uh, as victims and uh, up to six I'm sorry, up to 56% uh, of girls experience it. And out of those who experience sexual harassment, an even more um, important number would be that 87% of those who experience it exp say that it has a negative effect on them. It's not just boys will be boys, or this is just game playing. They have negative effects we could talk about um, at a different point. So really high rates of sexual harassment that are happening in middle school of all different kinds. Thank you. I think it's really helpful um, to know that small actions are important and, um, you know, in helping prevention, it's important to pay attention to those because they can lead to more aggressive behaviors down the line. So that's helpful for, I think, everyone to be aware of for right. sure. Right. Um, and if I could just add one more thing, Marissa, yeah. one of the things that we know, too, is that sexual harassment happens most in middle school. It drops off in high school. But what happens is those who have engaged in sexual harassment are more likely to progress to engaging in sexual assault and rape when they get into high, high school and then on into uh, post high school, college or outside of college. So mm -hmm. it is a, a predictor of later, more serious sexual harm. So you should take it seriously. Yeah. Thank you. Someone who works with high school students um, and let's say high school aged girls wanting to know a little bit. I know you guys will have a good answer for this because I know we do um, the curriculum works with social media. Um, Want to know how to handle prevention as far as social media for them and being a good influence um, without making them too uncomfortable in a conversation about it. A lot of them love um, some of the platforms like TikTok, Instagram, etc. cetera, um, but their, wor and their worlds revolve around it. But they, you know, this person hears things that sometimes don't sound very healthy um, as far as things that peers should be doing. Um, and it's sometimes yeah. not even people they know um, that they're using these platforms with. So any advice on that would be great. 
So um, we actually talk about the so do you want to talk a little bit about what we do in our program around this? Yeah, topics? absolutely. So as a part of the Air and Talk curriculum, we spend a whole day on safe technology and social media use. And that's something we think about is how do we talk to our students who are using these platforms every day um, without making them feel judged um, or that they should um, be ashamed of, of the actions that they're taking and um, what we focus on um, we share a story about a young girl in Maryland um, who shared a video of herself with friends performing an act on a, on a young man um, and the friends share the video with the school and the the, one, the, the young woman who shared the video ends up getting arrested for child pornography. And so we use that story as an opportunity to talk about some of the consequences that our students might not already be thinking about. Um, most of them don't know that they can get in trouble for sharing videos of themselves on social media or by text. Um, and so we use it as a learning experience. So we share the information with them that this is a law and that um, that can have some consequences. But then we also talk about um, how we all use our own social media and how we want to be perceived and how we want to interact with people and we use it as an opportunity um, to explore how our how our actions impact other people. So we teach the consequences, the legal consequences, but we focus more on um, how we can use social media because it gives us a great opportunity to connect with other people in a way that not only makes us feel good, but makes the people we interact with as well.